Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to start a multi-part build, a Feather Damascus Bowie. Dad, I'm pretty sure that's not how you make Feather Damascus. Jeez, tough crowd. You've seen a lot of Bowies on the channel lately. This one will be the last one for a while. Let's just say I'm practicing for a special one coming up. For those that have never seen it, Feather Damascus is probably one of the most complex patterns to get right. It's very stressful. Here I'm starting with a regular billet, just alternating layers of 15 and 20 and 1095. Like usual, I'm adding a little flux at the beginning, just to make sure the forge weld takes and there's no scale between the layers. So here's a graphic of what the pattern looks like right now. The red is the 15 and 20 and the black is the 1095. After we get it forge welded, the first step is to get it into a square. And that's what I'm doing right here. Once the billet is square, then I'm going to put it in the squaring dies and crush the corners. That's going to produce the pattern you see in the graphic. Once I've pressed in the corners, then I'm going to start pressing on the ends of the billet to flatten it out. And that's what's going to give us what's called C's. You can see that in the graphic here. Once we get the C's drawn out into a long bar, then we're going to cut that up, restack it after grinding it and cleaning it up, and that's going to give us what's called crushed W's. Here I'm just putting a few tack welds in this to keep it together. Then it's going to go into the kerosene, which soaks into the cracks and helps prevent any oxygen, then into the forge to be forge welded into our crushed W's. Here's a graphic of what our crushed W's are going to look like when we're done. Then we're going to restack and do it all again. Now I'm drawing it out with the drawing dies. We need to get it into a nice long bar because again, we need to cut it up and restack it. It's important to get the billet as square as you can get it with nice sharp corners so it lines up better for the restack. Here we are again. I've cut it up into four, tack welded it, restacked it, back in the kerosene, back in the forge. Rinse and repeat. The purpose of this restack is just to give us a nice fine pattern in the feather. For 
For this next step, we definitely need the billet to have nice square corners. Now folks, we're approaching the stressful part. Here it is after forging, all nice and squared up. The next step is to slice this up again in a whole bunch of layers and stack it up high. Then we're going to split it after we forge weld it. So here's where things went a bit wrong. I probably should have made these stacks just a bit wider so they were more stable, but when I put it in the press the first time I probably didn't have it completely level and it put a little S curve in my billet. Now I spent the better part of an hour trying to get this all straightened out. I wasn't convinced this was totally forge welded yet, so I didn't want to just press it down, which is why I went to the anvil and used the hammer to make sure the forge weld was set. Once I was convinced it was forge welded, then I just took it back to the press, pressed it on its side, that flattened it out, and then I could continue. What I'm trying to do here is just compress the billet a little bit so it's a little bit shorter. I want to make sure when I split it, I don't get any kind of S curve in it and it just splits right through. Now it's time for the next stressful part, splitting this billet down the center. If you don't get this centered right, everything is ruined. So you get one shot at this. You can see here I had a tough time getting the billet off of the splitting device. I ended up just taking the whole die out and taking it off near the anvil. All right, the split went really well. Time to um, just sever that, clean this up, and forge weld it back together. Now I'm just forge welding the two halves back together. It was fully welded all around with a seam, so this actually went really well. And now, as always, the most stressful part of any feather Damascus build. That's drawing out the billet that's been reforged. The reason this is so stressful is that you're putting a lot of force right where the billet was forge welded. So it tends to split on the edges and you have to keep grinding those out between every heat. Here, this is what I'm talking about. You see this split right here? This has to be ground out before the next heat. So I've done a test etch after doing the forging and um, hopefully you guys can see that. It's picking that up on the camera. So it looks pretty good. So the most important part I feel on a feather is, well kind of two things, but the tip of the knife, the feather should, the center of the feather should be at the exact tip of the knife. If it's not, it just looks really odd. So you got to make sure you're you're tapering your knife to be right at the tip okay so that's one of the things the second thing is I always like the feather you'll notice the feather goes this way I always like because that's the way a feather looks I like the tip to be here and the feather to spread this way I also think it looks kind of odd if it goes the other way not quite as bad as if this doesn't go to the tip but still so this is really centered in the billet, which is great. This is going to be my tang. This is going to be the tip. So what I'm going to do is actually just forge down this part a little bit. I'll get a little length that way. And um, and yeah, and I'm going to forge the, uh, the tang down. I'm actually going to flip this so that this is my tip. So I'll take this off. Let's go back in the forge. 
So here, this is a lot of hammer work, just to finesse the profile a little bit. I wanna do this on the hammer and not on the press, just so I don't open up any more splits along the side of the billet. I'm trying to taper that point, making sure to hit both sides evenly just so that I keep the center of the feather in the center of the billet. Here's my next problem. So I thought I got all the splits out, but I didn't. And here's one that starts to affect the shape of the profile. Here I'm comparing to my design, I think I can get away with it. Now it's time to put in the tang. I'm using the press to isolate the steel here and get some length into the tang. So here it is after the final forging. Um, I had some issues. Uh, there is, you probably can't see it anymore, but there was a, a, a split here, which is why this seems like it goes up, because I had to keep grinding and keep grinding. I think I got it out. There's actually just a little bit left there. And the tip split a bit, but that's normal. It'll, I'll just cut it there. So no more forging on this thing, just because I'm afraid it's going to open up more uh, with forging. So we're going to do stock removal from here. So I'm going to draw the blade on. It'll be a little bit sleeker than my typical Bowie, but um, it'll still look good. I'm doing the rough grinding on the profile. Then I'll take it to the horizontal mode so I can finish it off. Check out that new misting system. It comes in really handy when I put the bevel in. And now, like usual, I use the surface grinding attachment to get both sides nice and flat. Here comes the layout fluid so I can put on the layout lines and know where to grind to. Hey folks, I've had so many people ask me about this filing jig. In the next Triple T Thursday, I'm going to go over how you can make one. Now I'm putting in the rough grind on the bevel to get ready for the heat treat. This is where the misting system really came in handy. The only reason I pull the blade away from the belt is if I want to look at it and see what my grind is like. Otherwise, no dipping of the blade. Here I'm just putting in a sharpening choil, Spanish notch, whatever you want to call it. This little groove right before the plunge. After three normalization cycles, I'm ready for the quench. This is 1095, so it gets Parks 50 quench oil.
you probably can't see it, but this is a 60 HRC file. And this one is a 65 HRC file. Well, there we have it, folks. After the heat treat and the temper, there was a little warp in it, but I took it out with the uh, three-point jig and the temper, so she's nice and straight. And uh, you can see a bit of the pattern. Very cool, I think. It should look pretty nice. This is the first knife I had the opportunity to use my new misting system and I was really happy with it, especially here on the final grind where you don't want to overheat the blade and ruin your temper. I actually had a viewer on the Copper Damascus Bowie tell me that he didn't think the final blade was actually what I was working on because he didn't see me hand sand it or anything. So. This is left in for that guy. Now it's time to do the guard. I wanted it to be Damascus to match the blade. I didn't have a big enough piece, so I took two of the cutoffs from a part of the billet before, and now I'm forge welding them together. After a couple of heats, I felt like these were solid. After I let it cool down, I took it to the grinder and just grind some flat sides on it so I could take it to the mill and do the slot. Here it is with the slot all milled into it. Now let's put some shape onto it. I'm finding that the way I like to do guards the most is do a flat profile and then just take it to the vise and use the oxyacetylene torch and then put a shape into it and then do final grinding. Now I'm grinding in that finger groove into the guard, and when I get to the handle, I'll make it a nice transition so that's really smooth in the hand. And now I'm heat treating the guard because I want it to etch exactly the same way as the blade and not be some weird off color. Now I'm doing the final grinding on the guard. I've got a 240 grit belt here. Now I'm putting in my usual scallops into the guard. This time I decided to use the one inch small wheel instead of the two inch wheel. Uh, just the guard was a bit small and I thought that would be a better choice here. Okay, I'm ready to start the handle work on this. Um, I've taken my, um, my block here that I'm going to use, um, which I think is amazing, but uh, I've decided I'm going to use some spacers. So I've got black, white, black, white, black. So I think that'll look kind of cool just as a separator. Um, these are G10. I've just taken a marking pen and just scratched them up on each side just so the epoxy has something to hold on to. Uh, and I've cut these. I've also scored this one. So I'm actually going to glue this up separately so I can fit the tang. Um, just because these tangs are always curved, so it's easier to do this one and then do this piece. So 
So I like to use these can't twist clamps. Uh, if you don't have these, get some, they're awesome. Link in the description. Um, I'm gonna use these, but you gotta be careful with these. Uh, don't crank them down too tight or you'll squeeze all the epoxy out, which we don't want. I like to drill my two outside holes first, and then I'll go in and put holes in between those two and then just play with the drill and kind of connect them and then use a brooch and file it out after. Okay folks, I've got my block now all glued up. One important uh, aspect now is to square up this block with the knife. And to do that, we put it, this is a surface plate, so I know it's perfectly flat. I have a one, two, three block, which I know is perfectly flat. I'm going to put the blade on here and then take a height gauge. And what I'm looking for is the lowest point. See, if you can see it, it's there on all four sides. Okay, and then flip it over and do the same thing so that Okay, once you get the lowest point, then you can lock this and then draw your line. And then flip it over and draw your line. So now, now I can grind to that line and know that the width of the handle is perfectly aligned with the um, the knife and it's going to be completely square then i can go on and shape my handle if you don't do this first your handle will not be symmetrical on each side so that's a good tip guys now it's time to electro etch my maker's mark in the blade and really this is just a battery charger uh, where you've got one lead connected to the knife and the other one you got a cotton ball and you just dab it in some salt water and then onto the piece over top of a stencil and it electro etches your stencil right onto the blade. The only thing better than making knives is your wife bringing you lunch. <laughs> Thanks honey. Hey dad. What do you got there? You gonna share some of that? What we're doing now is I've already squared up the handle material to the knife. Uh, I've got the guard on it. I've got it fitting all nice and snug here. Now it's time to drill the pinhole. Uh, especially when I have a bolster like this, I like to put the pin on the other side of the bolster and I usually only do one pin for this kind of construction. So what we're gonna do is I've got some mosaic pin that's 3 16 so I'm gonna drill a 3 16 hole through just touching the tang, then pull it out, drill through the wood. The reason for that is if you try to drill through this, that's gonna flex your drill bit, and you'll actually end up making this hole a little bigger. So definitely drill through it, touch that, remove it, and then drill through your tang. And I always go one drill bit up when I drill the tang, just so there's a little play, because you don't want this to kind of pull the knife away from the, uh, from the material. So let's go do that. Now that I've got the hole drilled for the pin, it's time to profile the handle on the saw. Then on to one of my favorite tasks, which is shaping the handle. Now that the handle profile is complete, I'm going to start to taper it from the back towards the guard. And then after that, we're going to start to shape the edges and round it off a little bit so it's comfy in the hand. Here I'm just cleaning off the handle with some acetone, but you can kind of see what the color is going to look like. 